So on a previous video, you would have seen me um, using this CX-5M and actually getting the signal through to the TV screen. As you can see at the moment, it's got no signal because this is off. And onto the computer, which is just off shot. And I'm going to kind of keep it like that because you'll be able to see what's going on either through the computer or through this uh, camera that's above the workbench. Now, what I thought we'd do with this video is go through the cartridges that I possess. So before we get going, we need to do the normal parish notices. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not? Hit the subscribe icon. If you want to be notified about when content hits the channel, that's the bell icon for you. If you like the content of this video, give it a thumbs up, write comments below. I do read them. Um, and finally, there is uh, the TMGT community address down the bottom there. My brain is starting to fade for today. Um, go over there, support the channel, support the production of videos, join the community. And finally, the Instagram and Facebook feeds are down there as well. That's where any channel announcements will be made or are made. Now back to the video. OK, the Yamaha Music Computer comes with a cartridge already installed on it. So when you switch the computer on, the cartridge is already installed. It's actually, you can see it, turn this round, it's actually this bit here and you have an audio out, MIDI out and the Yamaha keyboard which came in two flavours. You had the small one and the big one. Now I do have the small one. The small one actually is in storage so I can't go and get it at the moment. So I'm not going to demonstrate the cartridges per se in this video. I'm just going to show you what the cartridges actually look like. Okay. So um, as I said the first cartridge to show you is actually the synthesizer cartridge that comes with the CX-5M. Um, and to do that, what you do is you type in call uh, music. And that will take you into the onboard synthesizer, which is what this thing was sold with in, back in 1983, 1984, whenever the uh, unit you've got was produced. And effectively, if I had the keyboard here, I could play the keyboard and this thing would output um, electric organ at the moment, uh, it's a four voice um, or four tone, should I say, that's probably better because now voices are now used for polyphony rather than uh, tones. It all gets a bit confusing now. People are using different words for different things. Um, but back in, the, back in the day, this this was effectively a voice was the tone and the number of keys you press was the polyphony of it. Now it's slightly different. But anyway, I digress. So on the main screen here, you can see that I have electric organ 2 selected. And you can also see that the volumes are wherever the volumes are. And using the cursors, I can go up and down. And I can change organs, bass, etc., etc. I'm not going to go. I said I'm not going to demonstrate this, but the whole idea of this is to actually give you a flavour of what this thing was designed to do. So that's cartridge number one. That is the base cartridge that comes with this machine. It came in two flavours. It came in 01 and 05, if I remember correctly. This has got 05 fitted, which was the later flavour. Some of the early machines had 01. Um, there are slight differences between the two. I think I think 05 has more um, polyphony. Um, to it, but effectively it's the same thing. Next cartridge. Okay, the next cartridge I'm going to show you on this is um, not a music cartridge, actually. It was somebody gave me this. As you can see, the box has seen better days, as has the uh, the insert. I think it's obviously been stored in somewhere that was a bit damp, has that whiff to it, although it has been sitting uh, somewhere nice and dry for several months now, so it has dried out and it's lost a lot of the, the damp whiffiness to it. But this was a graphics cartridge called uh, Graphic Artist. So let's put that in. With all these cartridges, you have to start from a position of the machine being off. And here we go. So this one doesn't like this setting, obviously, on this on this side, but it's actually coming across quite nicely on the computer. Um, 
push mount button or hold any key. So let's do that. In we go. And not quite sure what's going on here. I have no instruction manuals for this cartridge whatsoever, so this might be a uh, a case of having to. Uh, at some point in the future, go and find some instructions for it, because at the moment I can't make it do anything. <laughs> but that's the graphics <laughs> cartridge, which was a complete waste of time. <laughs> Next cartridge. Okay, next cartridge I'm going to show you is this one. Very quick through this. This is the YRM101 cartridge, another official one from Yamaha. Comes with the uh, owner's manual, which, you know, typical Yamaha, very large. Also comes with this, which is the strip that goes over there. Um, apart from the fact on this keyboard, the keys are too fat, that it doesn't go over there, but that's kind of where it's meant to go. Um, so you can see what part you're playing. And then we have the cartridge. So um, let me just put that on top of this so that it gives me a rough idea. Now this is, a, um, this is the composer cartridge. So this is what you're meant to write your songs in. So effectively this is the, the, the sequencer. So if we pop that in like so, and we switch on, let's see what we get. And there we have a stave of a bass line and a up line. Again, I don't know how this works at the moment. I haven't really got into the CX-5M. I will be doing that. The, the book is fairly comprehensive written in English and French. Obviously, my French, as you guys know, is uh, pretty poor, so I shall be reading the English section. <laughs> Why would I use to read the French section? Um, it's very interesting, actually. A lot of these cartridges were sold in, were sold in France and England um, as a dual package, so I'm not quite sure whether that was the popularity of the machine or whether that was the machine's market. I've seen very little of this stuff in German or Spanish. Um, so, uh, I can't seem to get it to do anything. Uh, bar, no, no, it works fine. Copy, play, no, nothing there. Du -du 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 -du. <sighs> Part one, one bar, music computer. I think I probably need the keyboard for this or a MIDI source, if I'm brutally honest. But there you are, that's the second one, that's Composer. Okay, next cartridge I'm going to show you is this one. Oh, the Yamaha official cartridge. This is YRM102. Uh, this is the voicing program, the FM registration. Again, if I open the box up, got manual number one, English and French. Manual number two. Um, to put that in the box. Then I also have the, uh, the rumble strip that tells me what things are meant to do. Uh, and to be honest, I've never opened this one up. In fact, most of these I haven't opened up because I really haven't had the time to play with the CX-5M. Uh, and there is the cartridge. So let's plug the cartridge in, like so. Let's see what it does. And that looks a very busy screen. Uh, restore, copy, swap, cassette, save, load, print. Ooh. I have to be honest and say, I'm looking at this thinking, um, that one's going to take some time to work out, I think. Well, let's go dark directory. So it says DI uh, return. And there you go. There's a list of all the instruments that are currently on here. 
Um, brass trumpet. So this is obviously looking, I think, at the moment. Da -da -da -da. E organ one, two, three. Yeah, this is obviously looking at the moment at the internal um, synthesizer because I recognise those in those positions. So if I go escape, does it do nothing? If I go exit, does it do anything there? Nope. If I go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Control 1 plus 4, operator on and off. Yeah, so this is designed basically to work with the internal synthesizer. But this is a composer, so you can actually edit the tones on the internal synthesizer. All well and good. Next cartridge. OK. The next one, which was the one I was really interested in, is the DX7 voicing program. So this is YRM105. Again, in here we have an owner's manual and a manual written in French and English, which I'm being butterfingers like that. Don't seem to have any any rumble strip in this one. Um, and then we have the voicing program as well. Uh, this one didn't come in plastic, so let's pop that in like so. Switch the machine on. And there we have what looks very much like a DX7 um, program structure. So if I go into uh, F1, and what we can see here is very clearly, uh, and you'll see this on the machine anyway, um, but you can see very clearly we have the algorithm um, setup that we're using. So this is the algorithm setup, which is this sort of top area of the screen. Uh, and then we have each one of the um, uh, partials uh, or the, the oscillators, the one to six operators. Operators is what I'm trying to say here, really. Is one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and you can go into each one of those. And I'm not sure how they go. There's into one. I can change the levels of one. Uh, I think I need to press return, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, it's not allowing me to do that. But I can, can I do this? Return up. Uh, I don't know how to use this, of course, because I you know, I'm, I'm, I need to learn how to use some of this stuff. Um, I'm just showing you. But I was expecting to be able to, to tab up and down. Maybe it's in, ah! Yeah. Install and delete. Um, Algorithm 3, algorithm 4, 5, 6, 7. And then you can go down into the oscillators and you can change them up and down. I'll work it out. That is the DX7 cartridge for programming the DX7. And then you dump the sounds via MIDI from this onto your DX7. Next cartridge. So then we move on to this one, which is the FM Music Macro. Again, don't know much about a lot of these cartridges, to be honest, what they were designed for comes with a very um, thin manual, which is, looks like a photocopy, uh, if I'm honest. And then we have the cartridge, which is YRM11. Now this is interesting, so rather than the other cartridge take over, what this seems to do is it seems to um, go into BASIC, which I'm assuming means that we have to use this through the onboard synthesizer. 
And just quickly th flicking through the manual, it says on page two, call music. So this is obviously needs to be run with the uh, onboard synthesizer. So I'm not going to run that with it, but that's how it do how it works. So that's one for another video. Like all of these are one for another video, but that's that one. This next one goes into the 300 series. I don't know what the difference was between um, the 100 series and the 300 series, but this is the the MIDI recorder uh, YRM301. Obviously, the books, this one's been quite well thumbed. What's very interesting, though, is that when I got this machine, all the literature for this machine was in this sort of green, and all the literature for the earlier machines in blue. So whether that's something to do with the fact you need a, uh, a third generation of the CX-5M to run it, I don't know. But here is the MIDI recorder. And we'll pop that in there, like so, and we'll switch it on. So let's see what it's going to do. Very, very interesting. Let's have a quick shifty through. Does this require the... Uh, da, 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 da. What it says it does need is the mouse. Uh, once you sisters uh, call the basic basic after type of standard basic or disk basic page will appear depending on whether you have a disk basic connector to call the MIDI recorder call MR so you have to type in Hey, look at that. Four track MIDI recorder. I have no idea how it works, of course, like most of these cartridges at the moment, but that's what a four track MIDI recorder looks like. Hey, hey, result. Next cartridge. Okay, next one is YRM506. Now this one was one I was particularly interested to try and get hold of because uh, this one, again there's the big green manual, is the FB01 voicing program. So we've seen the DX7 voicing program but this is the FB01 voicing program and it comes with a card that sits like that on top of the keyboard. Uh, and again let's plug this one in like so. And again, you can see that there's a whole raft of uh, programs here, very similar to the uh, the voicing program we saw earlier. Um, let's type directory. There's nothing in there because nothing's been downloaded. Um, problem I now have is trying to get backwards. Uh, that doesn't like that. It doesn't like exit. What does it say on here? Give me any commands here. Uh, da, 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 stop. Operator. Nope. Um, but this is the voicing program. So I know the theory behind this and the and the DX7 because I have actually seen them operating. I haven't operated them, but I've seen them operating. Effectively, you dump the sounds into into the machine, and then once you've got the sounds in the machine, you can edit them and then dump the sounds back, which is what I intend to do with these. So next cartridge. Okay, this one didn't come in a box. It, it, it kind of was given to me in a plastic freezer bag. Um, but this one is YRM55. Now, this is FM Music Composer 2. Now, that was FM Music Composer, so I suspect this is an upgrade to it. Let's plug that in. So this came in 1985 and much the same as the other one where you had the stave. It's got exactly the same. 
again, need to spend some time working on this. I don't know what the difference between FM Composer 1 and FM Composer 2 is, but that arrived one day um, after a email exchange with somebody, and that's how it arrived. <laughs> Next cartridge. And the last thing I'm going to show you on this video uh, is the FFG uh, 05 unit. Now, this is not really a cartridge, much the same as these are. And you'll see why in a sec. So there's the manual, completely different style of manual. And then this is the cartridge. Okay. Now, the reason why this is a different style of cartridge is because if you look at the back there, you can see the keyboard plug in, the MIDI, and the audio out. And this cartridge won't fit in the top. And that the reason why that is is because this cartridge is designed to go in the side. This is the upgrade cartridge for the original CX5. M that had the 01 sound module in it. Now, why have I got this? Because I've already got the 5 in there. And the answer is, it came as a lot. So, uh, when the person who gave me the FB01 and the 301 uh, cartridges in these, bo in these black boxes, they came from France, this arrived as well. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. Um, I don't know whether there's any market for just shipping it on who's people who've got the original and want an upgrade possibly but that's what the that is actually what the the synthesizer inside this looks like when it's not actually in the machine that's what it looks like so as you can see yamaha actually were quite supportive of this device in terms of what they produced over the years, so um, between probably 83 and 87. And I do actually have some more cartridges and stuff to show you on the CX-5Z uh, M, uh, and I'll save those for a different video when I talk about the actual specific subject that they're related to. This video is probably long enough for, for what it was designed to do. Now, the I will be doing a series of videos on this machine and what this machine is actually capable of. But there is a little bit of a learning curve for me as well, because um, obviously this stuff doesn't work any idea of the way a modern program would work. It's all tabs and, and, and dashes and up and down arrows, etc. Whereas on a modern machine, it's all trackpad and mouse, etc. It does mention in a number of the um, manuals that I just I flicked through while I was in between the videos that um, it would be beneficial to have a mouse um, so I will look into seeing if I can get hold of a mouse which is uh, plugs into one of these D-pin connectors down the side here so I hope you enjoyed that if you did give it a thumbs up put some comments in if you didn't well say la vie but I'll leave you with my normal greeting. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.